Welcome to episode 51 of Discovering Nagasaki from a Local. My name is Chad. In my ongoing weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. This week, Daniel Hausen and Denise Rolheiser were the only people to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. Thank you for answering my challenging questions. The first question from last week was, what was the last thing I added to the Oyako topping before I added it to the rice? The answer is Mitsuba parsley. The second question from last week was, how many large anchors are visible on the lawn at Seaside Village? The answer is three large anchors. In the cherry trees beside our cafe, there are hundreds of these noisy cicadas. I've turned down the volume on this clip considerably because it is difficult to be heard when they are nearby. In today's vlog, I will show you how to bake organic honey buns using organic rice yeast. I will also give you a short tour of a very interesting museum in Nagasaki City, Nagasaki's Museum of History and Culture. Let's get started. To make a regular batch of organic honey buns, I will use 750 grams of flour, 70 grams of honey, 54 grams of sugar, 250 grams of water, 70 grams of organic rice yeast, 24 grams of butter, 24 grams of skimmed milk powder, and 12 grams of salt. After combining the ingredients, I will mix them for 8 minutes in this mixing bowl, and then allow the dough to rise at room temperature until it fills this plastic container. This is the incubator that we use to prepare our organic yeast. The yeast is incubated at 30 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. We use this slow rising yeast in all the bread we make. This is what the honey bun dough looks like just prior to forming. This dough is stickier than the other dough we make because of the honey inside. Now I will weigh out the first dough portion using this dough scraper and digital scale. Each dough portion is 38 grams. I managed to get it on the first try. Next I'll form these dough portions on the counter. As with the other buns that I've shown in previous episodes, I will use my thumb to create a smooth surface on top. Then I will pinch off the creases on the bottom side of the bun, just like this. Stickier buns like this are a little harder to handle. Now I have to repeat this for the remainder of the dough portions. Before putting this tray in the proofer, I will spray the dough with water. This will speed up the rising process. Beside this tray is my next batch of dough, in this case cinnamon roll dough. I made cinnamon rolls in episode 3. Because this batch of honey bun dough rises more slowly than other dough, it will spend at least three hours in the proofer, rather than two hours. Here are some other types of bread that have just come out of the oven. On this cooling rack you can see some plain country loaves, 
some yamogi buns, and some pumpkin buns. In the proofer, we now have a tray of butter rolls. On the second shelf, two trays of cinnamon rolls, a tray of walnut rye bread, another tray of butter rolls, and a tray of fruit buns. I'll take the tray of honey buns on the top shelf and put them on the counter. Now I have to spray them with water before I stick them into the oven. These buns will now bake in the oven at about 200 degrees Celsius for 16 minutes. I'll shut the timer off before it hits zero and show you the freshly baked honey buns. I'll definitely need an oven mitt for this. I'll set the hot tray on the counter for a moment. There they are, hot and delicious. I'm now in Tatayama, where I will give you a short tour of Nagasaki's Museum of History and Culture. This is the sign in front of the main entrance of this prefectural museum. This is the first floor lobby of the museum. At the bottom of the stairs is a statue of Ryoma Sakamoto, a ticket counter in a gift shop. In the center of this lobby is a model of this museum on display. There are more than 81,000 artifacts on display here. You need more than two hours to see everything. On the second floor in front of the permanent exhibits is an Okunchi float from the Edo area. This entrance leads to the Encountering Westerners section of the museum. These posters describe the arrival of Western traders and missionaries in Nagasaki. And this display is a 16th century picture scroll of pirates. And on the other side of this aisle are two folding screens depicting the arrival of Europeans in Japan. In an adjacent room are displays of products handled by Dutch traders. Textiles, spices, food, brushes, pottery and animal artifacts. On my left are 17th century rolls of Dutch fabric on display. In the early life in Nagasaki section of the museum are some 17th century Japanese accessories and pottery on display in this tatami room. This is a model of the 17th century house of Nagamasu Yamada in Nagasaki. And on my left is an Okunchi Kasaboko on display. In this room are many Kakijiku, or wall scrolls, from early Nagasaki. A small cannon. A metal teapot. And other artifacts on display. In the arts and crafts section of the museum are excellent displays of pottery and even a samurai sword. There is pottery here from all over Nagasaki Prefecture, including Nagayo pottery on these shelves and Hasami pottery on these shelves. There are also displays of Kanzashi hairpins.
and a variety of lacquerware trays and boxes. In the China Exchange section of the museum is a Chinese folding screen and a model of the original Chinese residence area in Nagasaki during the Sakoku or Japanese exclusion period. Here are some small painted Chinese statues and a model of a Chinese temple on display. In the Dutch Exchange section of the museum is Philip Siebold's surgical toolbox and an antique Dutch clock on display. Here is an interactive display of Dejima Island, a Dutch folding screen and a poster of various 17th century Dutch artifacts. These six Westerners were important in Nagasaki's history. Philip Siebold, a German physician. Carl Thunberg, a Swedish botanist. Ingelbert Kempfer, a German physician and writer. Jan Blenhoff, a Dutch director of Dejima. Hendrik Duff, a Dutch commissioner of Dejima. And Isaac Titzing, a Dutch philosopher and writer. In this room are some rare photos of Ryoma Sakamoto and an antique box camera from early Nagasaki. In the same room, you can view quite a few antique muskets in this wall display. In this modernization in Nagasaki section of the museum, you can see many telegraph artifacts from early Nagasaki on display. Here is a recreation of Nagasaki's Tatayama government office. On both sides of this hardwood floor, hallway, are many large tatami rooms. From here you can see the large outer gate for this facility. As I walk across these tatami mats, you can see in the distance many of the trading artifacts that were administered by this Tatayama office. On the floor you can see pottery, textiles, fur, stationery, and even elephant tusks. Right beside these displays is the viewing area for this museum's daily samurai plays, or geki. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, how many honey buns did I bake in today's vlog. Second, how many antique muskets were hanging on the wall in the display case at Nagasaki's Museum of History and Culture? Be the first to correctly answer both of these questions in the comments section below. I will announce the first three people who do so at the beginning of episode 52. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below. And you can watch all of my vlog episodes on my online YouTube playlist. Today's B-roll involved baking, so in episode 52, my B-roll will involve farming. Stay tuned for more interesting vlogs from and about Nagasaki. See you next week.